cleansing wave right there <laughs> only the blood of christ can wash away our sin heavenly father thank you so much for allowing us to be here tonight thank you lord for the cleansing wave thank you for the blessed name the blessed hope thank you for the opportunity to worship in your house help us to not take it for granted 
Help us to realize how quickly it can be taken away from us. But Lord, with your help, we can meet with you tonight and we can be encouraged and challenged and stirred and moved in a tremendous and a mighty way. I pray for your help. I pray for your guidance in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. You all may be seated. Amen. Let me, let me get this one clipped on here. It is good to see everyone tonight. Good to be with you. Amen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go from that. Amen. Let's go ahead and go into our message so that we can have our time of prayer at the end of the service. And so uh, we'll go into our message and then have our time of prayer at the end of the service. Genesis chapter 12 tonight. Genesis chapter number 12. Genesis chapter number 12. Amen. Genesis chapter number 12. Amen. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. It is a blessing. You know, it's a, we learn nothing else out of this pandemic. We learn how quickly church can be taken away. Just like that. And um, how quickly things can change. We ought to treasure every opportunity. Every opportunity. Genesis chapter number 12. Verses number one through four. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken with him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, help us as we look at your word to gain some understanding, something to help us on the journey. Lord, I pray for those tonight that are sick, that you touch their bodies and lift them up. Pray for those that are hurting, that you would give them the help they need, that you just everyone here that you would reach their need in jesus precious name amen and amen and um we see here the story of abram of course we know later he was known as abraham but abram uh who uh, god had a very special plan for his life uh and by the way god has a special plan for every life right. now it may not be as specific and as big as Abram and what God had for him. But don't ever think that God doesn't have a plan for your life. God always has a plan for your life. And, um, and so uh, he, he calls Abram to do something for him. Uh, and it's, a, um, it's really in three parts. The first part is, is, is get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Uh, in the United States of America, we are a moving people. We are a people that are accustomed to moving. Uh, in the, uh, you think about those uh, men and women who got in those big Conestoga wagons and they took off for the Wild West and uh, many of them never got to see their families ever again because you just, you couldn't travel like you used to. You, you couldn't go back and forth and and uh, uh, we, we built this land from sea to shining sea because of moving people. People that uh, Daniel Boone, uh, when neighbors would get to be about five miles from him, he'd think it was too close and he'd move to another place. And uh, people that are on the move, we're, we're a moving nation. We're, we're accustomed to that. Um, uh, we're not as attached to, to home and family in this country as many other countries are. But in Bible times, families stuck together. Families built tribes together. Families built communities together. Uh, families stayed together. Uh, you know, even in, in Jewish tradition, many times you'd have the father's house and then built off of that would be the children's homes. And, and they, would, they would work together on the farms and they would work together in different things. And it was a, it was a big deal for someone to leave their family back then. Uh, you think about 
You think about in this story, um, you think about uh, Isaac. Isaac stayed with his father, right? Uh, Jacob and Esau, the only reason they moved away is because they got mad at their mom and dad and got mad at each other. Um, but then you think of Jacob's sons, all of Jacob's sons did what? They all stayed with him. They all stuck together. The only reason Joseph left was because they sold him into slavery. And so they, 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 were, they were a very family-oriented society. Uh, you go back and you had, you know, the eldest son was, would become the leader after the father passed away and, and the blessing and all those things that they had. And, and it was a very family-oriented uh, uh, society. That's how society worked at that time. And so it was a big deal, a big deal for someone to just get up and leave their family. Uh, and, and we see here that God is telling Abram, I want you to get out of your country. I want you to leave your family. I want you to leave your kindred. And then he says, unto a land that I will show thee. Does not tell him where he's going. He says, I will show thee. You know what that is, right? That's future tense. I will show thee. Uh, later on, I'm going to show you. Uh, and he really didn't fully show him uh, uh, until the split with Lot, when Lot chose one side and he chose the other. And, and the, even then, he basically said, you're going to have all of that territory. Um, but but um, so we see a man being called of God to step away out of his comfort zone, away from the norm in society at that time, away from his kindred, away from his father's house. He's telling them, I'm going to send you to a place and I'll show you later on. Um, you know, get, get in the, uh, 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 the Volkswagen uh, and go. Uh, there, there was no what, what city, what town, whatever. Just go. And then he says this, and I will make of thee a great nation. But he had no children. He's 75 years old. Now, in the days of uh, before the flood, in the days before God had had enough and wasn't going to battle with them anymore, that wouldn't have been a problem. But in Abram's day, they were not living as long as they had before. And so they were not bearing children that usually that late into life. And so now he's saying, leave your, the normal society of the day, leave your kindred, leave your home, leave your family, and I'll go and go just start traveling and I will show you later on where you're going. And oh, by the way, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. And he had no children. He had no children. He promised to give him a son in Genesis chapter 15. He promises to make him a great nation here. Um, but... As Abram left, and by the way, Abram obeyed God, and he left, and he took the step of faith. But he kept traveling, and he kept traveling, and he kept getting older, and he kept getting older, and he kept traveling, and he kept traveling, and there was no son, there was, there was no great nation, uh, he's left, he even lost a lot, which I think that's an interesting other part of the story because God did tell him to leave his kindred, right? His father's house, that's a different, different message for another day. But, uh, but, but even Lot, Lot left him. Uh, it's, it's just him and his family. Uh, it's just him and his wife and the servants that are, that are now together. And it just keeps going on and on. I don't know about you, but I, after a while, probably would have gotten pretty discouraged. I mean, after a while, I would have gotten tired of picking up my tent stakes and moving on and never finding that city that was built by God. Uh, I'm talking in the flesh, talk about in the flesh. You get tired. Uh, uh, God promised a son and then you're 75 and then you're 80 and then you're 85, and then you're 90, and there's no son. 
So what was it that kept Abram moving? What was it that made Abram not say, you know what, forget this, I'm going back to my family. I'm going back to my father's house. I'm going back to my kindred. All we're doing is moving and moving and moving. Uh, tents are very nice on a camping trip. But then it is nice to get back home. The tents are nice on a camping trip. But after a while, that inflatable mattress doesn't do it anymore. It just doesn't. And so what? You, you want your home, right? Well, you didn't get to have that. He's just moving, a nomad. Um, and he's, he's having to move, and there's no son, and there's no nation, and these. I, don't, don't you think he missed his family? For 75 years, he'd been around them, right? Then all of a sudden, he's got to go. I don't have any idea if he got to go back and visit. I don't have any idea. I don't get that sense from the scripture. I don't know. All I know is this. He's left his family. There's no son, and he's living in a tent. Now, he was a rich man, right? So he very easily could have built a nice home, right? Nice ranch, nice farm, nice place to settle down, a beautiful home for his wife, all those things that he could have had. But that wasn't God's plan. So what was it that kept him going forward? It's one word, faith. Faith. You see, in the Christian life, first of all, you're saved by faith. You're saved by faith. And then as God calls you to do things, you have to test, step out by faith, right? But if you're going to continue to follow the Lord and continue to do what God wants you to do, your whole Christian life, your faith can't end with salvation. Your faith can't end with that one step of faith out into the will of God. You are going to have to learn to live a life of faith. Now in our society, I think it's a little bit harder to live by faith. I'll tell you why. We have everything. We have so much. And so much is available I mean, there's no other country in the world like this country who's giving away money and, and taking care of things and doing this and doing that. It just doesn't happen around the world. We have it good, and I praise the Lord for it. I'm not complaining one bit. I'm grateful for the Lord's provision. But at the same time, if we're going to do what God wants us to do, we have to learn to live by faith. Because God is going to ask us at times to do hard things, things that are impossible, and things that we can't see in the future. You don't think it was a hard thing for him to leave his family? He'd been living with them for 75 years, right? I mean, he'd been around them 75 years. Even when they had moved from one city to the next, it was together. And now he's got to go out. Now he's got to go out. That's hard. That's hard. And then he's 75 years old, and God says you're going to have a son. That sure does seem impossible. That sure does seem impossible. And then on top of that, uh, not only is it impossible, but he, God does not tell him what's, what the future holds. He just says, I will show you. Somewhere down the road, I will show you. When? When I want to. When I want to, I'll show you. And that's how it is many times with God. That's how it is many times with God. God will ask you to do hard things. God will ask you to do things that seem impossible. And God will ask you to do things and not show you the end or where it's going to be. Many times he will say, just step out and I will show you somewhere down the road. He doesn't tell us when it's going to be down the road. He doesn't tell us how it's going to be down the road. I think there are things that he's going to ask us to do that he, we're not going to really understand until we get to heaven. 
There's just situations that we may never fully understand until we get to heaven. Why did I have to go through that? Why did I have to do that? Why did I have to go there? Why did I have to go over there? Why did I have to be a part of that? Why, Lord, why was that? But what we do is even though it's hard, even though it seems impossible, even though we have no idea what's down the road, we live by faith. Right. We live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And so let's look at a, a definition of faith. Uh, faith is to be convinced, persuaded, conviction, a creed. It is your belief. Believing God is all he says he is and will do all he says he will do. That's faith. Faith is having the conviction, being persuaded and convinced that God is all he is and will do all he says he will do. So therefore, if he says, go ye into all the world, and then he says, I will never leave you, then forsake you, we step out by faith wherever he wants to send us into the world, believing he will never leave us nor forsake us. Faith, uh, many have used the acrostic for faith, forsaking all, I trust him. Many times people have used that, forsaking all, I trust him. Another definition is, definition is complete and total belief, trust, and obedience complete and total belief trust and obedience I've used this example of before when I was in Connecticut doing an internship there was a lady there that we were witnessing to it was a friend uh, of, of uh, a family that we were staying with it was me and another fellow that were there and and we were talking with her and the, and the, the host had wanted us to talk with her and, and we were talking with her and uh, with the wife and, and, and talking about salvation and, and she was in a church that believed in infant baptism and she was in a church that believed in some other things and, and we showed her the scriptures and we, we gave her the word of God and we showed her how to be saved and we showed her all of those things and, um, and she said, I can see, I see what you're saying. I, I, I believe what you're saying. I can see what it is in the word of God. But then she made this statement. But just in case, can't I get my baby baptized? Wanting to have a lifeline just in case. But see, that's not total faith. That's not complete and total belief, trust, and obedience. If you're going to really say that you're a person of faith, it has to be complete. It has to be forsaking all I trust him. Forsaking all intellect, common sense at times. You realize that God has asked people to do some things that don't make common, that aren't common sense. Is it really common sense to fight a 10 foot giant with a stone? Does that make common sense? When you're a shepherd boy and he's a man who's been at war who knows how many years. I mean, that doesn't make common sense. There's a lot of things that don't make common sense. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, just uh, you can go over thing after thing after thing. Uh, 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 just there's so many stories in the scripture that you go, that doesn't make sense. Taking one little bit of oil and filling up barrel after barrel after barrel to take care of a widow. Does that make common sense? The preacher comes and says, you got just enough to make a little cake? All right, make it for me. And God will take care of you. Does that make sense? No. Did God provide? Does birds feeding a prophet make sense? Never had a bird. They come and steal my dog's food. They don't bring me food. All right. My dog has a lot of fun chasing him away from his dish, you know. But, but they, they, they take food. They don't bring food, right? And normally you give a bird food, what are they going to do with it? They're going to eat it. 
They didn't eat the food. They brought it to the prophet. Does that make common sense? No. There's a lot of things that don't make sense in the word of God, but they do make sense with God. And that's faith. Faith is believing even when it doesn't make sense. Faith is believing when you can't see the end. Faith is a complete and total belief, trust, and obedience. Complete and total belief, trust, and obedience. There were times when I was young, when my son was younger, he's gotten bigger now, heavier now, but when he was, especially when he was little, boy, we'd get to play in, on, the, on, on the chair rough, and I'd have him in my, I'd have him in my lap, and we'd be, I'd be bringing him forward, and then I'd be bringing him back, and then I'd be bringing him forward, and then I'd be bringing him back, and my wife would be like, I don't want to watch you all, uh, you know, and we'd been having a great time, we'd just be having a blast with him there, and, and he'd, he'd be going, and he'd start laughing, and he'd start laughing, and I'd, we'd be roughhousing, and, and, and then, but there'd be a couple times when he'd be sitting up, and all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, he would just throw himself back. And I'm going, you know. Do you know why he did that? He just really believed I was going to catch him. He really believed him. He really just believed that I was going to trust him. I mean, or that I was going to catch him. Trust. You, you ever had that where you, you, you know, you tell a kid to jump and before you're even ready, they just throw themselves at you? And you're like, I didn't mean that second. But why do they do that? They trust you. Throw them up in the air, throw them up in the air, you know, high as you can get them up there. They just, they really believe you're going to catch them. And can I tell you this right now? We serve a God who has hands that are more sure than mine. And we serve a God that has hands that are more sure than yours. Remember when you take kids by the hands and spin them as fast as you can? Do you know how easily it would be for them to just slip out of your hands? But you had strong hands. God's hands are stronger. Complete and total belief, trust, and obedience. So let's talk about the faith of Abraham. First of all, Abraham had saving faith. Look at Genesis 15, 6. Look at Genesis 15, 6. Genesis 15, verse number six. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for what? Righteousness. He believed in the Lord and he counted him for righteousness. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Abraham was not saved because he stepped out and traveled. He was not saved because he believed God for his son. He saved because he had put his belief in the Lord. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. For by grace are you saved through faith. If you're believing in anything else besides the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not saved. You are not saved. If you are believing in, in Jesus Christ plus baptism, you are not saved. Jesus Christ plus good works, you are not saved. Jesus Christ plus church attendance, not saved. Your faith can only be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ plus, plus, plus the faith and prayers of my parents, not saved. It's faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith alone. Abraham had saving faith. But he also had serving faith. He also had serving faith. He obeyed God, believed God, and God fulfilled his promise. In Genesis 21, you know what happened? He had a son. And by the way, not a son that his wife wanted him to have by another woman. We're talking about the son that God had promised, and that was Isaac. God gave him a son at 100 years old, uh, at uh, uh, Sarah at 90 years old, past the time of giving birth. God gave him a son. Why? Because God had said he would do it, and he fulfilled his promise. 
And Abraham obeyed God and believed God and God fulfilled his promise. It's wonderful to be saved by faith. But your salvation is just the beginning of the journey. Your salvation is just the start of that wonderful Christian life that God has for you. And if all you've ever done in your life is get saved and that's it, and you've never really done anything since then, you've never really lived for God since then, you have missed the journey of faith. You've missed it. We're not supposed to just hold on to the end. We're not supposed to just get saved and then just wait for the return. God has something for you to do. How old was Abram when God called him? 75. You know what that tells me? You're never too old to do God's will. You're never too old to be called. You're never too old to walk by faith. We need to realize that God has a life plan for us and it is a life of faith. By faith, what does this say in Hebrews? By faith, they stopped the mouth of lions. By faith, they did this. By faith, they did that. By faith, they did the other thing. And then after he talks all about faith, he says, now you go run your race. God told us in Hebrews 11 about all the people that walk by faith. And then you know what he told us to do? Run our race. But what type of race? A race of faith. Living by faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Author and finisher of our faith. So you're saved by faith, and you need that saving faith, but you also need a serving faith. You by faith. If you're going to do what God wants you to do, you're going to have to step out by faith. It's amazing. Most people, when they start out and they're going soul winning, you know it's not easy. It's uncomfortable. Many people have to talk themselves into going. So many Sunday school teachers that God laid on my heart and said, I believe that they would do a good job in that class and I'll go talk to that person and they'll sit there and look at me and go, I don't, I don't think I can do it, but I'll pray about it. And then they come back and say, okay, God said to do it. And then they step out by faith. You know what God does? He helps them. He helps them. And before you know it, it's been one year, it's been two years, it's been five years, it's been 10 years, and they're still teaching. They're still doing what God told them to do. I did not believe I could be a preacher. I didn't want to get up and sing. I didn't want to get up and preach. I didn't want to get up in front of people. I didn't want to do it. So you say, how did it happen then, Brother Matt? I had to, by faith, trust God. By faith, I had to say, okay. I'll do it. Okay, I'll surrender. Okay, I'll do the internship. Okay, I'll do I'll take the preaching assignment. Okay, I'll be in charge of that Sunday school class. Okay, I'll take over the choir. By faith, I had to step out and say, by faith, I'll do it. I never been expected to lead choirs. I don't read music. All my music is in my head. That worries me as I get older. It might start sound, sounding weird. Uh, but uh, it, it's up here. I wish I read music. I can still learn it. But, but the truth is, it didn't matter at that moment whether I read music or not. What mattered is God was saying, do it. And so... With all the trembling, with all the fear, and without believing that I could even do it, I had to step up and say, okay, I'll do it. And then I had to trust the Lord by faith. Yes, we need that saving faith, but we need a serving faith. Do you serve God by faith? Or are you a have to see first person? Are you a have to see first person? Or are you simply a serve and trust God person. 
My sister's from Missouri. My brother's from Missouri. And you know what they call Missouri, right? Show me state. The show me state. But it's not just in Missouri. It's in Texas too. Okay, if you'll show me exactly what the, everything that's going to happen between now and eternity, I'll serve God. That's not how it works. It's not how it works. You have to step out by faith. You have to step out by faith. If God says it, I'm going to do it. People get all worked up about if I start to tithe, I don't know how I'm going to be able to make the bills. How am I going to be able to pay the bills? What, how am I going to be able to do that? It's by faith. You say, God said to do it, I'm going to do it. Then the missions conference comes along and, and God starts to stir in your heart. And he says, you need to give the missions. You go, but wait a minute, Lord. I, I, I didn't even think I could give the tithe and now you're asking more. And you know what you do? You start to give. And you do it by faith. And you trust God. And you believe God. And you follow God. And when you do that, God will show you things that you can't even believe. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There's been some amazing things that I've seen over the years of God taking care of things, God doing things, God moving, uh, uh, and he does it different ways in different people's lives. The faith of Abraham, he had a saving faith. He had a serving faith. And he also had a lasting faith. Look at Genesis chapter number 22. We're not going to read the whole thing in Genesis chapter number 22. Look at the first couple of verses. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Let's, let's stop and back up a minute. Who was the promised son? Isaac. Who was the one that God was going to use to give him that great nation he had promised? Isaac. And who is God now saying sacrifice? Isaac. Isaac. So what did Abraham do? Did he spend the whole night arguing with God? Did he try to find another way to wiggle around and, 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 and find a way to do it another way? Maybe he didn't mean a literal sacrifice. Maybe he just wanted me to give him for a special service. No, no, no. In this case, God was asking for a literal sacrifice. So what did he do? Verse number three. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Human reasoning would say, if I kill Isaac, the lineage is done. The nation is done. How could God ask this of me? But he didn't fight with God, he didn't argue with God, he didn't toss and turn and and, and, and try to change God's mind. There was another time when he tried to change God's mind. And he did. God allowed him to. But this time, he got up and he got the wood together. And he got everything together. And he got the servants. And he got his son. And he said, let's go. And they went. Hmm. What a test. You say, did God need to know that Abraham had faith? Doesn't God know everything? God knew his heart. But this was a test for Abraham to teach him and to confirm his faith. God will do that many times in our life. He will confirm our faith. What did the disciples say? We believe, help thou our unbelief. And many times the way he confirms our faith is through testing. He brings testing into our life, not because he needs to know, but we need confirmation. We need to be strengthened in our faith. 
You ever thought about Job? You know, Job had to have a lot of faith in God. You know, Job questioned why he was born. But he never questioned God about why he was going through what he was going through. He did wish that he was, well, he, he had the mully grubs pretty bad, and I don't blame him. It got pretty bad for Job. But Job had faith. But you don't think after all that was done and he saw that what happened, that Job's faith wasn't even stronger? And here's Abraham. Abraham so in love with Isaac. Loved that boy more than life itself. And God is saying, give him to me in a sacrifice. And he gets up. He puts the wood on the, on, the, on the donkey and he's going and he is going to be in obedience to God. He tests him. He tests Abraham's faith. All those years Abraham had waited for a true heir and now God asks him to give him up. You know what's interesting about this story? You can see the influence on Isaac that Abraham had. When they took this journey, did Isaac ask where they were going? Doesn't say here. He just went with his dad. And when his dad told him God will provide himself a lamb, he just trusted his dad, right? And when his dad started to tie him up and put him on the altar, what did Isaac do? Trusted his dad. He had learned faith from Abraham. See, that's the thing, folks. We got people behind us that are watching us to see what our faith is going to be like. We got young people coming up that they're going to be going through their struggles in a little while. They're going to be going through their battles and they need to see how we go through it. So that they have an example of how they need to go through it when it comes into their life. And it's interesting when you look at the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And many times the same things that happen to one happen to the other. Faith. God is testing Abraham. He wants to see. He wants Abraham to make a decision. Who's more important? God or Isaac? Who is he going to put his trust in? Was he going to trust God to build the nation or Isaac? And all through this trial, Abraham just believes. Look at verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him. Look at verse number 6. I'm sorry, verse number 5. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Look at verse 7 and 8. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them together. And look at verse number 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. He just believed that God was going to provide that lamb. And we understand the prophetic significance of that statement, but it's also a literal. He just believed that there was going to be a substitute for his son, Isaac. And here's the amazing thing when you trust God. God is faithful. When you place your faith in God, God is faithful. Well, he may not do it the way you want it done. He may not do it the time that you want it done. He may not take your life the way uh, 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 it's going to go. I've, I've talked with the, the young people in the Bible Institute about how, to be honest, I could have never imagined the course that my life has taken. I didn't plot this thing out. I didn't plan it all. I, that's not the way I planned it. I, uh, you know, the way things worked out with, with me being here, the way things have worked out with, with me, the way I met my wife, with my son Jonathan, with the way my life has gone, 
I, this was not what I thought everything was going to be when I was back yonder in college. It's better. I'm grateful for it. But I didn't see all of this coming. I didn't know all of this was going to happen. I, I thought my life was going to take another course in the ministry. And God chose something different. But one thing I have learned over these years is God is faithful. If you place your faith in God, he is faithful. You say, but what he's asking is hard, Brother Matt. It was hard for Abraham. What he's asking seems impossible, Brother Matt. It was impossible for Abraham. What he's asking, I can't see what's coming down the road. Abraham couldn't either. But he said, but I'm going to trust him. Was he perfect in it? Of course not. He had problems when he went down to Egypt, right? We all get into trouble when we go to Egypt, right? But he had problems when he went to Egypt. He gave in to his wife with, with Hagar and Ishmael. He had his hiccups along the way. He had his struggles along the way. Just like you're going to have your hiccups and struggle on your life of faith. But you need to learn to live by faith and know that God is faithful. He gave Abraham a son. He provided the lamb. He gave him a land. God will always be faithful in his time and in his way. And it will always be at the right moment. And it will never be late. But you have to trust him on that. You have to believe that that's the case. I remember when the, on the last van that we had, um, we had, because of the traveling we were doing with Jonathan and, and we were doing a ton of traveling those first few years. I mean, a lot of traveling uh, up and down the road to Houston for doctor's appointments, hospitals, therapies. There was one year when we went every other week to Houston so they could do serial casting on my son's arm. They would put cast on and then they would, Two weeks later, they take him off and stretch his arm a little bit more and put another cast on. We did that for a year because his arms were so tight and, and just up and down the road and up and down the road. So what we did is we got that extended warranty on our, on our van. Well, it got to the end of the extended warranty and uh, almost to the end of the extended warranty, and guess what happened? Yep, it started breaking down. It just started turning off in the middle of the, middle of the intersection, in the middle of everywhere, just turning off. And it was back during the recession, and they had closed the Dodge dealership in Harlingen. So I had to go to Westlaco. That doesn't seem like that far, but it is when you go over there, and it's 30 minutes over, and it's three hours waiting for them, and then it's 30 minutes back, and it's, and it's a mess, or they have to keep it overnight, so they have to give you a ride back, and then you got to find a ride back over there. And, and it's, so I, I remember we're, we're taking it over there, and... and uh, I, three or four times I had to take it over and they could not figure it out. And I'm just getting more and more frustrated and more and more frustrated. But every time we went over there, they started, they were changing out parts. I mean, everything they could try to figure out. They finally, they, they got to the point where they, they were really not believing that there was anything wrong with the car because every time they had it, it worked, looked, worked like a charm, you know? And I mean, they changed out the computer. They changed out, I mean, they changed out everything. It was under warranty. And um, I remember one day I, I was just I was just fuming. I'm gonna have to take it over there another time. I'm I'm, I'm upset and I'm everything. And I, rah, 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 rah. I'm just I'm just I'm tired of that. I'm tired. My wife finally looked at me and she says, "Why are you so upset?" She says, "We're getting all kinds of new parts on our van." I went, "Oh yeah, you know how expensive it is to change a computer? You know how expensive it is? There was a lot of parts they were changing out on that thing." And they finally, they, they didn't believe us, they, but, but God was good because the last time we took it there, they took it out on the freeway and it died on them. And what it was, it was the bundle of uh, wires up underneath. The, what do they call it? That big packet of wires that's up underneath. And so they changed that out. But I remember I was so frustrated and so upset with what was going on. And God was just changing out all kinds of parts on our van to keep it running another almost 100,000 miles. See, sometimes we get all frustrated, worked out, worked up because we don't see what God's doing. 
There have been some times when we thought that something was just, it was the end of the world, and then we came to realize, oh, God's doing something better. Because he's never late. He's always on time. It's always going to be what's best. But you have to believe he's faithful. And then you have to step out by faith. I have a question for you. Do you live by faith? First of all, are you saved tonight? Do you have that saving faith? Do you have that serving faith? How about that lasting faith that as time goes by, you keep trusting him even if he asks for an Isaac-type sacrifice? Say, How can I trust him at that moment? Because you believe he is faithful. You believe God is faithful? We need to live by faith. We need to walk by faith. We don't know what's coming down the road. It might be something big. It might be something small. It may be something that God's going to ask that seems impossible or hard. But Abraham was able to do what he did because he walked by faith. And he believed in God's faithfulness. And you can fulfill the plan of God for your life if you walk by faith and believe in God's faithfulness. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. How's your faith? Do you live your life by faith? Are you willing to do whatever it is that God asks, even if it's hard, even if it seems impossible, even if you can't see the end? God takes us through different periods of our life, through different situations of our life. God, God has ministries for us. God has things for us to do, but you're not going to fulfill God's plan for your life if you don't walk by faith and believe in his faithfulness. If the Lord spoke to your heart about your life of faith, or maybe you're having a hard time believing that he truly is faithful, why don't you come to the altar and talk with the Lord tonight? Let's all stand together. Every head bowed, every eye closed as they sing. If the Lord spoke to your heart. Why don't you come? Talk to the Lord about your faith. Maybe you just want to come and thank him for his faithfulness. bid goodbye to Facebook Live. We're going to have a time of prayer here in the church. Thank you all for joining us. I hope that you'll take some time right now at home and pray uh, as we will be praying here in the church.